What's up everybody, Anton here. And today what I wanna talk about is what to do if your Google Merchant Center account gets suspended for misrepresentation. Now, ideally this isn't going to happen to you because you're gonna go through the necessary steps to set it up before you actually create this thing, get something wrong and then get suspended. But if you found this right now because you just got suspended and you're thinking it's the end of the world, don't worry, you can actually get your accounts back. It's not the strictest thing in the world. You just need to correct what was wrong. I'm sure there are certain things that you can do and that make mistakes on that won't let you get your account back. But if it's a general error that many beginners make, you should be able to have it resolved. So just know in the notes underneath this video, I'm going to include some links. The first is just going to go to Google's general policies on account enforcement for Google Merchant Center. And this is where it lets you know that if they think your account needs to be suspended, they will suspend it. However, you can request a review after changes are made. And even if your first review gets denied, there'll be a cool down period as they call it. But after that, you can continue to make changes, you can resubmit it. And again, if you make the correct change, if you fixed whatever was against their policies to begin with, then you should be good. You should be able to get your account back. It's not impossible as with some other platforms that you might get banned from. Before we get into this and what I believe is the most common reason for people losing their accounts, I do think it's important to mention that if you are watching this right now or listening to the podcast version and you're a member of my coaching program, Dropship Lifestyle, just stop right now, go to module six of the Dropship Blueprint and watch the lesson that is called 6.0.2 compliance checklist add this to your store this goes through step by step exactly what to add before you ever actually submit your product feed so that your account doesn't get suspended to begin with and it's important that you follow that sequentially now for everybody else or for anyone that just wants more information on what misrepresentation is as defined by Google for Merchant Center I'll share a link below that goes to a page where they say Google doesn't want users to feel misled by the content promoted in shopping ads. And that means being upfront, honest, and providing them with the information they need to make informed decision. For this reason, we don't allow the following. Promotions that prompt users to initiate a purchase, download, or other commitment without first providing all relevant information and obtaining the user's explicit consent. Promotions that represent you or your products in a way that is not realistic, accurate, and truthful. So basically, a lot of times people will get suspended for this. They'll see that and they'll say, well, I'm not misrepresenting any of my products. I'm uploading them exactly as they are. They're the actual product photos, the actual product descriptions, the actual product features and dimensions and everything else, so why did this happen? And yeah, if you don't look further into this, you might just think, I didn't do anything wrong. You might request a review without making any changes, and you might hear back that it's not reversed. So the reason I believe that the majority of the time this suspension gets handed out is specifically because of this. Now this is another page that I'll link to in the notes. This is Google's page where they go deeper into misrepresentation, and they share some actual examples of what's not allowed. Now, they're obviously all important. I think people should look into all of these, but the ones that I think are most relevant to why the majority of accounts get suspended for this reason is the one right up top, omission of relevant information. And the specific things in here are, first of all, having pricing of products, total price and currency, if it may depend on additional conditions impacting the total cost for the user, i.e. auction pricing, membership fees, contracts, payment schemes, additional purchase requirements, creating additional undisclosed payment obligations during the payment process. And then you see here, it says, see the feed specification attributes on availability, price, tax, and shipping for specific guidelines to comply with this policy. Now, I think that is the biggest one. And you'll see the second one, it says, failure to clearly and conspicuously disclose all related conditions before and after the purchase. Examples, missing merchant terms and conditions or shipping information. Return and refund policy that is unclear, missing, or is not easily discoverable. So when you look into these further, right, the actual examples of what Google gives as far as what misrepresentation is, I think it's pretty clear that most people that get suspended for this, it's not because their product photos and prices don't match the actual products they're selling. It's nothing like that. It's because maybe their shipping policy or return policy isn't clear. It's because maybe they didn't set up their Merchant Center account correctly. And when you go into your business information and you can set the shipping prices and you can set the tax information, maybe they 
they didn't fill that out or they didn't fill it out in a way that actually matches with their Shopify store. And when that happens and Google Merchant Center sends their bots out to your store to add products to the cart to see if the prices actually match, they don't because maybe you do have tax liabilities in one or more states and tax gets added that wasn't reflected in your Merchant Center settings. Or maybe you do actually have a shipping charge that wasn't reflected in your Google Merchant Center account and now the price is not the same as what is in your product feed. And when these things happen, the account will get suspended. That way, if you get that email and you realize this is one of the problems, either my shipping policy is not specific or my returns policy is not specific or I have the product prices actually being changed when somebody is going through checkout, either by shipping costs or tax that's not accurately reflected in my Merchant Center accounts, well then, guess what? This will eventually get triggered. You will eventually get this email from Google and you'll have to make those changes before you resubmit. But again, it's possible to do. It's not the end of the world. Your account's not gone forever as long as you make those changes. Now, with that being said, before I wrap this up, I do think that it's worth mentioning that while I believe this is the most common reason that people have their account suspended for misrepresentation, there are many other reasons that this can happen. Unacceptable business practices, misleading or unrealistic promotions. Uh, there's more things that people can actually do that are violating the terms rather than just a careless mistake. So I'm not gonna get into those because I've never seen anybody that I've worked with get suspended for those reasons because we don't do those things. So as always, guys, I hope you got value from this. If you're listening to this or watching this and you don't even have a store yet and you're getting scared because you're like, Anton, this sounds like a lot. I don't wanna get my account suspended. The only way this will happen is if you don't go through the steps correctly the first time. That's why I'll just quickly call attention again to module six of the Dropship Blueprint where I show you what to do in advance and kind of double check that work. But again, even if your account does get suspended for some reason, it is not the end of the world. Google allows you to make the changes to resubmit your site and to get approved so you can be back to running as usual. So again, guys, as always, I hope you got value. If you did and you're watching this on YouTube, give it a like. If you're listening to it on the podcast feed, please leave a review over there. I appreciate you. As always, if you want more information on how to build your own highly profitable semi-automated store, go to dropshipwebinar.com for a free training. And I'll see you over there. See everybody.